going to show you how I make my soft sourdough sandwich bread. So I'm starting with 300 grams of filtered warm water and to that I'm going to add my activated sourdough starter. Now the rubber band is the level the starter was when I last fed it so it's more than doubled in size, it's very bubbly and quite ready to make the bread. I'm going to add some sugar and some olive oil, mix that together with a fork and then add my flour. I'm using 400 grams of high protein bread flour like King Arthur and then 100 grams of all-purpose flour which just helps the bread become a little bit more soft. Then I'm going to add this dough hook attachment to my stand mixer and turn it on to incorporate the dough. This dough is very stiff, so using a stand mixer makes it a lot easier. I can see it needs a little bit more water. I'm just going to go in with a teaspoon full at a time until I see the dough start coming together and cleaning off the sides of the bowl. just like that. And then I'm going to turn this off and form it into a rough ball. The dough's kind of sticky and very stiff at this point, that's okay. I'm going to cover it with some plastic wrap and let it sit for about 45 minutes to an hour. And then, once it has rested, I'm going to add the salt. Now I'm using 10 grams of fine sea salt and I'm going to mix a little bit of water with that just to help it dissolve. And I'm going to add it into the dough and pull the dough up around the salt so that it starts getting incorporated into the dough before I add the dough hook and turn the mixer on a low speed at first and then I'm going to gradually increase the speed for about three to five minutes but I want to make sure that all the salt is dissolved into the dough. If you stop it part way through and there's still granules of salt, throw it back in the mixer let it mix a little bit longer. But this is looking perfect. If you get in close, it looks soft, it's very sticky, and I don't feel any salt granules. So, I'm going to take it off the dough hook, and then it's important to keep this dough moving. If you hold it still for too long, it will stick to you like crazy. So just keep it moving until it forms a nice ball, and then set it back in the bowl. Put the plastic wrap over it and let it sit for about 8 to 12 hours or until when it, you jiggle the bowl, it wiggles and there's some big air bubbles on the top of the dough. I'm going to lightly flour a surface and then just gently coax the dough out onto the surface. You want to be really gentle, you don't want to knock too much air out of this dough. Then I'm just going to take all four sides one by one, fold them up and tuck them into each other, making sure there isn't too much flour present at this point is really critical to shaping your bread dough. If you've got too much flour present, the dough won't stick to itself and you won't be able to form the loaf properly. I'm going to remove any excess flour and then I'm going to flip the dough over and just tighten its shape. Working with first one side and then rotating it and tightening the other sides as well. Then I've oiled a 9x5 loaf pan and I'm just going to put that loaf into the pan and then push down so that the dough expands into all four corners of the loaf pan. Then I'm going to cover with a damp kitchen towel and let it rest for about one and a half to two hours or until it's puffy. I've preheated my oven to 375. The dough is light and puffy. You can start to see some air bubbles. It's perfect, ready to go into the oven. I'm going to bake it for 40 to 45 minutes. I'd like to check it around 35 minutes and tint it with a piece of foil if it's browning too quickly. And then when it comes out of the oven, I immediately brush it with some olive oil. This softens the crust and it also gives it a beautiful shine. Let the loaf cool for 10 minutes in the pan and then remove the loaf from the pan and let it cool the rest of the way on a wire rack. Ooh, look at that, it's beautiful. All those little bubbles, it's shiny from the olive oil we brushed on when it came out of the oven. And once it's completely cool, you can cut into it and get your perfect sandwich slices. This bread is delicious for toast, sandwiches, and it's really not that hard to make, so I hope you give it a go. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer them. Otherwise, enjoy making this homemade, delicious sourdough sandwich bread.